Get dressed. Oh, all right. It's time for pasta. Okay. Pasta! Hi guys, Miss O here. Just letting you know I am in a different venue today. So normally you see me at home in my kitchen, but today I am at my mom's kitchen where she has to do all the dishes for me. It's for reach. I don't want to go on camera. It's for reach. She doesn't want to go on camera right now. First thing you're going to need for today is a big area to work in. So I'm going to spend some time cleaning up this mess. I don't know how to... This is going to be my workstation today. All right guys, so my workspace is nice and clean because we're going to be using this entire surface area. I'm also wearing my like messy shirt because this is gonna get really messy. My hair is up. My bracelets, now my bracelets are off. Um, especially for this lab in particular, you're gonna wanna make sure you have nothing on your hands because like I said, it's gonna be messy and you're gonna get those hands really dirty. I'm wearing pants and shoes. You can't see them. I'm not a yoga instructor. And now I'm gonna go wash my hands. All right guys, so I had my glasses on for this so I could read the boxes. So there's a lot of different types of pasta. So I just went through my mom's cabinets and found all the different types of pasta she has here. Let's go through them. She's got elbow macaroni. She's got sincerely with special fancy kind. Um, I'm in selfie mode, so the words are backwards, sorry. More elbows. Vitalini, which is, hold on. These little guys, great for making necklaces. Like little tubes. We've got spaghetti. We've got pastina. This is my favorite as a kid. I covered it in butter. Um, also, if you ever get your wisdom teeth out, these are great. Orzo. These a lot of times are in soups. It's shaped like rice almost. Bucatini. So it's similar to spaghetti, only thicker. We've got penne, which is those pointy tubes with pointy ends. Rotini, which is like the twisty pastas. There's also egg noodles here, which are like my favorite side dish. My mom makes chicken. Um, just like it says, egg noodles, we're simply just add more egg to that kind. Today, we are going to make fettuccine. Fettuccine is similar to spaghetti, but it's flat. Not too wide, not too thin. It's flat and long, like spaghetti. While I wait patiently for my mom to finish getting dressed, I'll show you what we're gonna need today. So you're gonna need flour. All right, just plain flour works. By the way, if your family has a pasta recipe that you wanna use instead, please use that and share it with me. Uh, I'm just making a basic pasta. Salt eggs, olive oil. Now, if you don't have a pasta maker, that's perfectly fine. I only just got this one. You, I'm gonna show you how to make it with a pasta maker and without. So if you have a pasta maker, awesome. I have this kind here. I also have the kind that attaches to my KitchenAid mixer, but I'm gonna use that one. A roller, rolling pin. If you guys remember from the Calzone Labs, I told you I didn't have one. Guess who got one for the holidays? Measuring cups, measuring spoons, and a fork. Let's talk about ratios. You guys probably use those in math class. So when making pasta, there's a ratio of egg to flour that you need to use. I don't have a kitchen scale. So the general rule is for two cups of flour, you would use three eggs. I'm only gonna use one cup of flour because I don't need that much pasta. Feel free to use that ratio if you'd like though. And so I'm gonna use one cup of, I'm sorry, one cup of flour to two eggs or I could use three quarters of a cup of flour to one egg. Um, it's not an exact science. A lot of the flour that we're gonna be using is just to make the surface non-stick so I can roll out my pasta, it doesn't stick to the counter, and to use it on my rolling pin and to make it so this pasta doesn't stick to each other. So you're gonna use a lot of flour and like I said, it's gonna get messy. This is Barb. She Hi. is, her hair is up as far as it can go. She's wearing short sleeves. Have you washed your hands? Yes, wash I'll wash. wash I'll wash it in front wash of the students. Them. Give me out a bit. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is get about a cup of flour. So I'm gonna use my dry measuring cup, and I have my flour here. Do you need a mat? She thinks I need a mat. For what? All right, now the thing with this is if I was baking, I need to make sure this is leveled off and everything, but because I'm, this isn't the exact amount of flour that I need, I'm gonna spread some here, spread it around the counter, I'm gonna spread some on my rolling pin. Yes, Barbara, I washed it. And now I'm going to take this, which is about a full cup still, we'll a little bit more. And I'm going to dump it. Make a nice pile. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a well in the center. So you can use like a measuring spoon or your hand. So I'm gonna make like a volcano. Alright, so I make a well in the center. I'm gonna turn this so you can see a little better. Then what I'm gonna do is, I forgot to add the salt. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to my flour mixture. You can do it beforehand or do it now, it's fine. There's one or two. Let me crack. Oh, Barb wants to crack it. Don't mess up. This is what the eggs are. 
That's actually not a bad idea. She's putting it in the measuring cup first to pour it in there so she doesn't spill it. Oh, no, she's not. Just kidding. Up, up, up. Good job. You just messed it. Oh, now what you're no. going to do is you're going to scramble it. You can use your fork. You can use your finger. Hey, one floor. I got one. And you're going to scramble it in that well and then just add in a little bit of flour as you go along. <laughs> right? Uh-oh. I made a boo-boo over there. So as I scramble that egg, I'm just going to keep adding more flour from the sides. Again, I prefer to make a mess doing this and use your hands, right? Some people are like, I don't want to get my hands dirty. Oh my gosh, I'm going to make a mess. The best part of cooking is making a mess as long as you clean it up after. Come on. Or you have your own personal cleaner upper. Go ahead. What Stir it. Stir it. Mom, you stop it. You're making a mess. She's never done this before. What are you doing? I'm stirring it. You have to add oh, the flour. You told me you wanted to keep the sides up. And it's like she, she was going to No shells, no shells. No okay, shells. no shells. We'll let her slide. There's no shells. We'll let her stay. All right, so we add a little bit of flour at a time. Again, you can use a fork. I'm just using my finger. Just make sure you crack that yolk. I have my dough here and I'm just going to work it until it's a similar consistency and you're going to knead it for about 20 minutes. What that means is I put it down and I fold it over. Squeeze it, fold it. Squeeze it, fold it. Now when your dough is all one consistency, right? I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna wrap it in plastic for about 20 to 30 minutes so that the gluten can absorb that egg. The gluten is a protein in the flour and that's going to make it like a stretchier dough for making pasta. So you're gonna put this in plastic and then just let it sit for about 20, 30 minutes. In the meantime, you can clean up all this egg stuff, but you will need to flour your surface again. So while we're working on the pasta sitting and resting, um, I'm gonna start the pot of water to boil. So I just put a big pot of water on the stove. I'm gonna put it on medium heat. Put it on high, but I don't want it to boil too quickly because I'm not going to be done anytime soon. And now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to heavily salt your water. A lot of salt, like the ocean. Yeah. That's going to give your pasta a little bit of flavor to salt your water because who here has heard that you have to do that? Good. Why? What's the reason everyone tells you? Hey, mom, why do you salt the water? Flavor and it makes the water boil quicker. She said it makes the boil water boil quicker. If you've ever heard that before, they lied to you. <laughs> It that's not true at all it flavors the food but it actually doesn't make the bo water boil quicker that's what everyone always thinks but salt actually raises the boiling point of water this is also why they use salt on the roads when it's freezing outside right it's going to raise that temperature so it's actually going to take longer to boil because now the water instead of boiling at 212 degrees celsius i don't know the exact number but it's going to be higher than that so it's going to get hotter and take a longer time to boil why do you think that's something we would want when cooking mom why do you think why do you think we want the water to be hotter? To, to um, to... <laughs> you stunned me. <laughs> it's going to make your pasta cook faster because it's a hotter temperature. I so the, that... the water won't boil faster. It'll actually take longer. But once you put the pasta in, the pasta will cook faster. See, I thought that was... All right, guys, we lost Barbara. I don't know where she went. But it's been about 20 minutes, so I'm going to unwrap my dough here. Okay, I'm unwrap my dough. I'm going to re-flour my space. So I'm going to put the flour. I'm going to sprinkle it all over so the flour doesn't stick to the countertop. Then I'm going to take my rolling pin. And remember, I'm going to show you um, how to do it in the machine and how to do it just by hand. So I'm going to flour up my rolling pin, but it's a marble rolling pin. So if you're using a wooden one, you really have to flour it. This should not be too sticky. So we'll see. All right. So I roll, take my dough. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in half. I don't have a dough cutter here. My mom doesn't have one. So I'm just going to use my spatula and... Cut it in half like that, okay. right? And then, right, I'm gonna take this down, I'm gonna flatten it out, and I'm gonna use the rolling pin, and I'm going to make it as flat as I possibly can. Okay, so this isn't quite thin enough yet. It does look really thin, but ideally I should be able to see my fingers through it, and I can't yet. This is a little thinner, more what I'm looking for here. Very, very thin. It is extra floury. And now what you can do is, if you're doing it by hand, you just kind of like fold it over like this. 
and then you take a knife and I'm going to cut it into thin strips. All to be the same size. And now when you unravel them, you've got some fettuccine. All right, so here we have some fresh fettuccine. The thinner, the better. Fresh pasta only takes about three to four minutes to cook in boiling water. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it in a pile over here. If it's sticking together too much, just add a little bit of flour to it, right? And it'll make it stop sticking together. Now the other option for a pasta maker, right, I'm gonna clamp it to the countertop. This way it doesn't move. Not an entirely necessary step, but it does help the pasta maker not move when you're using it. Okay, then what you're gonna do is take your other piece of pasta, right? And I'm still gonna roll it out just a little bit. Then I'm going to, the first step is going to make it into one flat sheet. Here I have a nice sheet of pasta dough. Okay, so again, you can do the folding thing and cut it like we did the last one. Or we're going to stick the attachment on. I've got a nice piece. I'm going to stick the spaghetti side down. Ready? Oh, I have to move my hand. Okay. Catch it. Oh, look at it. It looks like the pocatini. <laughs> and then I've got some spaghetti. And again, you can drop it in some flour. You can let this dry for a couple, uh, couple hours, even overnight. Um, you hang it up. And let it dry or you can cook it right away if you hang it up and let it dry it'll last for a couple of days then you want to put it into the freezer or at least refrigerator if you're going to use depending on when you're going to use it but let's go put this pasta into the boiling water and see what we get i'm mixing up different kinds of pastas right now okay, let's go see so that's a nice rolling boil i'm going to stir it And you're gonna do this for about three to four. A little bit of olive oil into the pasta pot is gonna help it from sticking just a little bit. But honestly, water and oil don't mix, as you know. So the oil will stay in one spot unless you're stirring. So it's not actually gonna help anything stay not sticky unless you stir it. Again, three to four minutes until al dente. Al dente means that you have to use your teeth to eat pasta. Have you ever had pasta that was too mushy, right? You don't use your teeth, it's just like mush. Or pasta that was too hard and you have to crunch when you eat it, that's weird. Al dente means you just use the right amount of teeth. I think dente, dentist, means it's a little bit hard, but not crunchy. It's been about four minutes. I'm gonna turn my stove off. I've been stirring it. That's what it looks like. It's honestly, you can't tell by looking at it. You just gotta time it. Now you don't have to rinse the noodles. That is a myth. Um, actually, if you rinse off the noodles, you're gonna lose the flavor um, and a lot of that starchiness, which is gonna make the pasta really good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put that into a big pasta dish. Okay. I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil. I'm going to add some Parmesan cheese and some garlic. What you took away? Did you put butter in? More? Mm -hmm. And now I've got a nice little snack here. Some Parmesan, garlic, and olive oil onto my pasta. You can also use a red sauce that sounds or an good. Alfredo sauce. Lots of different things. Okay, that's enough cheese. Okay. And I like cheese. Guys, this one's a complicated one. I really sincerely hope you try it. You will make a mess. Just make sure you clean it up. Have a great day. Bon, bon appétit. Bon apple tea. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I got her. Oh. Now I'm gonna take about a cup 